Hello, we are the Doctors Bjorkman, and this week we are sharing our birth story for baby number two. <laughs> if you have followed us over the past couple years, we first shared our first pregnancy, kind of going week by week through that, and our birth story there. This pregnancy was very different. Very different. Um, our we started IVF, out with IVF. Our and IVF then, baby yeah. after some infertility, and and the labor and birth process was also <laughs> quite so different than the first time. Very different. So we're excited to share that with you next. If it's your first time meeting us, I'm Sarah. I'm a board certified OBG. I'm Kurt. I'm a board certified pediatrician. And we are the, the Doctors, Doctors Bjorkman. Bjorkman. Right. So with baby number two, we planned an elective induction at 39 weeks. I said, yeah. if he's not here, we're going to evict him. I love um, the ARRIVE trial. Um, you can check out our episode all yeah. about induction, but felt very good about that. Um, and so kind of the day before I was supposed to get induced, my OB said, hey, do you want me to strip your membranes? Um, and what that is is kind of a cervical exam where the OB kind of tries to separate that membrane from like the edge of the uterus. And what that does is it re can really, it releases some hormones and prostaglandins and sometimes that kicks people into labor and sometimes it doesn't. I'd had it done with cease in my first pregnancy a couple times, did nothing. Um, and That's so- That's just physically using finger to like push on the membrane of the mm -hmm. sac through the cervix. Yep. It's okay. just, yep. Just like a cervical check. So I said, sure, why not? It's not going to do anything. I'll see it for my induction tomorrow. Um, and you know, and then the best part was like two hours after that, we were sitting on the couch. I was trying to get some work done. Yeah. Um, and Sarah started having these little contractions Yeah. and she was very upset about it and not very up, but like, peeved was maybe a good word that like she thought like now i'm gonna have all of these non-productive contractions right. that's gonna wreck my last night's sleep right we were planning on one last good night of sleep before this little baby showed up so decided it would be a good idea <laughs> to have my ob strip my membranes today and initially was kind of very uneventful now it seems to have been just enough to piss the uterus off a little bit um, and every like 10 to 30 minutes or so, um, having a contraction. Yeah, I think more like seven to 10 minutes, but one of us is timing things. We can only hope that maybe this will kick us into labor, anything to, you know, get this show on the road to meeting this little baby. Sometime soon. So, um, the membrane stripping seems to have worked. We're having contractions every five, minutes or so, four, Kurt says, um, that lasts about a minute. I am not having a fun time. Um, people said like with my first labor, like I did not feel a single contraction with my first labor until we started Pitocin um, after my water had broken. And people said, oh, well, Pitocin contractions are way worse. Like that's, you know, why it was so bad and why you needed an epidural or whatever. I am going to disagree. Um, <clears throat> these are also not a fun time. Um, and there is a, I'm not getting a synthetic Pitocin here. This is all, mm, yeah, this is, this is a great time. This is, whew, so I think we're gonna, you know, head to the hospital here momentarily. Things are being put in bags. I've been in a little bit of denial, hoping this would just go away. I was hoping for one last night of sleep, but maybe not. So here we go. Well, I was hoping that the contractions were just going to go away. They did not. They so, did not. you know, as we kind of talked about in our Am I in Labor video, mm -hmm. when your contractions are about every five minutes, they last about a minute, and that's been going on for an hour. Five one one. Five one one. Um, it's time to think about going to the hospital when your contractions. You don't want to talk through them anymore. You don't want to walk through them. That is real labor. So. And especially if it's not your first baby. Baby. <laughs> Correct. So at that point, I told my OB what was going on, and she said, "Let's go to the hospital." So. Yeah. Unfortunately, we were about a half hour away. Yes. Um, which meant we had a great fun ride. We were thankful for 
Safe travel. Yes, they, you know like you see in the movies where people are like, go faster, go faster, don't stop at the red lights. That was how I felt. Um, he didn't run any red lights. He didn't, I, but at some point there he was like, were like you getting to onto the interstate and I was like, you're going around this on four wheels. I need you on two, let's get this <laughs> moving. I was just like clutching the like rail on like the handle and yeah. like it was rough. Um, it was rough. It was not a fun time, yeah. as I said. Um, it felt like it took us forever to get to the hospital, but... It was just over 20 minutes. Yep. Yeah. So we, we left the house at 1.10. 1.10. We were there a little after 1.30 a.m. And actually, so I dropped Sarah off at the front door, and mm -hmm. it was amazing. Like, yeah. the team there was just great. By the time I, like, parked in, like, the closest spot possible, yeah. got inside, she was in her room, had an IV in place already. My OB had said, hey... I've got this multip in active labor. She knows she wants um, an epidural. We are coming in. And so when I arrived, they thankfully slammed in an IV for me because yeah. you need to get some IV fluids before you get your epidural. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> I was on the struggle bus and the anesthesiologist came and gave me a nice little epidural, um, which took the edge off yeah. with my first one, it was like a combined spinal epidural. So when mm -hmm. they put, the, when they first did the, put that catheter in, they gave me a big dose of medication Bolus, yeah. um, with the spinal, with baby number one. And with this one, they didn't do that. And so it took a little longer for that medication to kick in. Mm -hmm. And it really just took the edge off. And I said, I said to my OB, I said, you know, I feel like I'm still kind of feeling it. Should we should we see if the anesthesiologist wants to come back? Because that's a big thing. A lot of times the anesthesiologist can tweak some things or increase your dose or do different things as long as baby's tolerating it and your blood pressure is tolerating it. Um, I, yeah. was, I was thinking that maybe we should do You're that. Not comfortable. Um, but, and we've talked about pain control and labor mm -hmm. before too. Um, and yeah. like definitely some people do it without pain control. Totally, um, absolutely. Absolutely. I did it without pain control for quite a while and said, I'm over this. Yeah. Um, and anyway, my OB was like, well, I think we need to check you first. Um, and she checked me. I was fully. And she's like, do you want me to just break your water and we'll have a baby? And I said, let's just do it. Um, I'll quit being a wuss here. And fully means fully dilated, 10, 10 yep. centimeters, fully your face. Like, Baby yep. was right there. Baby was ready. ready yep. So my OB broke my water and <laughs> my first push, she's like, you're not pushing. Yeah. It was very <laughs> funny. Uh, you were offended a little bit. I like... wasn't offended. I was just like, <laughs> I need to pull it together here. Yeah. Um, but it was very different with pushing with cease because I felt nothing was cease. This one, I still was feeling some pain. So it was really kind of hard to push against that pain um and so i had to kind of get my mind right to push right into that pain and then two pushes later we had a sweet little baby yeah he's perfectly clean you did it So it was pretty cool. My OB was just like, reach down, and I reached down and I grabbed little Bo, and he was here, and it was very sweet. He yeah. came out yelling, kind of like his sister. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing how different, like, the next time was. I felt like the first time we had all this time to kind of like prepare and like feel emotions, and here it was like, hey, we need to get to the hospital. Um, we want anesthesia here. Let's get that done. And then it was three was pushes a baby and baby, and there was a baby, and it was like a very quick process that like. You know, like you don't, you just act and do and are thankful for a team there to support you. Yeah. Well, that baby, escalated quickly. <laughs> yeah. Baby came out less than an hour ago. Yeah. Already uh, getting first meal. Mm -hmm. um, I think things go a little faster the second time through. That saying, never turn your back on a mole tip, is very true. So, um, what? That started contracting at like a little after 11. By like midnight, twelve thirty, we're like, yeah, this seems like real labor. Yeah, it's like, oh, this is. In the is car like... at ten after one, and baby was born at two fifty. Two forty nine. A.M. Yeah, so he's here, and he's perfect. 
so um, fast. Where someone was nice enough to take a couple pictures. Yes, of them so we've got too. some of that here. Um, um, it was awesome. It was way intense. Um, you know, with CIS, it was many hours. I yeah. my water broke. I needed pitocin, and um, it was just a much longer process. This it was like, bam, baby's coming. Yeah, which I think is like good, like to know, like baby number one usually takes time. Yes. Baby number two or more. Never turn your back on a mall tip. Go fast. Yeah. yeah. Um, How does it feel being dad a second time? Um, good. Good. He We're didn't like, cry this time. No. He it was close. Receive. but yeah. It was very close. Yeah. So then, of course, being there as partner, the biggest thing is just to be present. Like, and try to pay attention to what your partner needs, like whether it's as simple as water or a back rub. Um, and then, of course... I think you did offer a back rub, and I was like, nope, nope, no. nope. Yeah. <laughs> that was pre epidural really kicking in I think yeah yeah um and then just like you know being there for the magic of it all like staying out of the way but being right there at the bedside like invested in the process as much as I can be as a support person you know like oftentimes OB will let the the, the partner cut the umbilical cord which is fun mm -hmm. um you know like I didn't have any, someone asked like if I helped deliver the last one. I like, really wasn't, I was just excited to be there with you. Yeah. And I was really happy to have a super experienced OB who like, doing... is a dear friend of ours, like do the thing that she's excellent at. And yeah, I got she's... to just be dad, so. Yeah. So Sweet Bo is here and we love him. And it was a great, great birth. We had such a wonderful birth awesome team. team. Again, my OB is so wonderful um our, our nurse. nurse was amazing the yeah. anesthesiologist everybody was just so wonderful it was such a fun birthday party yeah. um bringing that little boy earthside so um we are just thankful that we're all safe you yeah. know with ob things can go weird real fast and be sideways very fast so we were with a team that we really mm -hmm. trusted and loved and now we have our little boy home yeah. And then we also took the time for that first postpartum day oh, yeah. to get some extra footage for you guys too. We're going to share all that um, in, next week about yes. like postpartum day one in the hospital, things that are happening for mom, things yes. that are happening for baby, yes. just so you know what to expect, whether this is baby number one or baby number seven. Yep. Um, and then first day home um, after that in terms of meeting big sister and that transition home too. Yes. And so we look forward to sharing these kind of week by week and then monthly baby and mom updates uh, with all of you coming up in the coming months. Yeah. We'll see you next week. Bye, guys. We're doctors. But not your doctors. Anything we've said in this video is for education or entertainment purposes only. It is not medical advice. Any specific medical questions you have should be directed to your provider.